Good morning, good morning. It is uh, an honor to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And, and good morning. <laughs> and to everyone here, I'd like to welcome you to St. Matthew First Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of the Reverend Conrad McCree Jr. And I would like to say it, I am so happy to see you all here this morning because you, 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 you didn't have to be here, but Amen. God allowed you to be here this morning. And um, to all of you who have went through, uh, going through right now, to all of our bereaved families, we are still with you. I know when it gets quiet after everything goes down, but that's when usually people need you the most. So um, to the Chastain family, the, the Hall family, everybody that buried the Cole family, uh, that buried a loved one yesterday, the ones that we don't know, the ones that we do, we, we are with you and we love you. And right now we're gonna ask everyone to stand as um, Brother Dixon will lead us in scripture. Good morning. Today I will be reading from Proverbs chapter 2, 1, verse 4. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, ye, if thou Christ after knowledge and with Dust up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Amen. You may be seated. We'll have our prayer for our brother Dixon. Please close your eyes. For this day, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for making what I know me. Thank you for bringing us here when we have come through struggles and storms. Lord, thank you for protecting us when we're in the middle of the raining. Thank you for helping us when we're stuck in the middle of trouble. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.
7, Luke chapter 7. Glad I've got a mind. Stay long, neither. I'm afraid. Yes, sir. Of the Lord. I'm still here. Seventh chapter of Luke. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of this just word. Before you sit down, if you've already sat down, you sit down. That's all right. That's all right. Sit down and tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor. <laughs> neighbor. An encounter. An encounter. With the Lord. With the Lord. Come on, say, an encounter. An encounter. With the Lord. With the Lord. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. And certainly, we give you the praise. You alone, O oh God, are worthy of it all. We pray now, God, in the name of Jesus, that just for a few moments, that, Lord, you would speak a word today that would encourage our hearts. We need a word from you. Yes, God. We don't need a word from the creed. But we need a word from you. I humbly submit myself to you as a willing vessel Lord, use me so that, God, your people might hear. Pray, oh God, that your word would accomplish that which it set forth to do. Pray, oh God, that you would load me down into your storehouse of wisdom and understanding. Pray, God, that you would speak now through these lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth, let the meditations of my heart ever be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and our redeemer. Speak now, God. We will hear. We would see Jesus today. And we will be careful and mindful, oh God, to the end, to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise which you so richly deserve. In the name of Jesus the Christ, and for his sake we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 And amen. The Bible records that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters, through the knowledge of Jesus the Christ. Thankful again for one more day, man, that the Lord has kept us. Amen. And that notion you can be at ease. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Amen. Don't get too comfortable. Amen. We don't want to be here. Don't plan to be before you long on today. 
We, we started a series on last Sunday. Uh, again, we honor the Lord for each of you in special places to these preachers, to and then this, and then praise the ensemble to these musicians, Amen. and then to our deacons, and then to our ushers. And to each of you, my brothers and sisters, it's good that we are here. Amen? Amen. And we praise the Lord for his mighty acts. Sister Gaines is going to be leaving in a minute. Come on, y'all, do this with me. Amen. Stretch forth your hands right back to where she's at. God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor for what it is that you're doing and what it is that you're going to do. I pray now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would get the glory out of what will be. I pray that you will comfort her, strengthen her, keep her, hold her as only you can. And then, God, we, your people, watch this. We're going to praise you now. We're going to give you glory now. We're going to tell you thank you now for what we'll be. Come on, y'all. Give it to him right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. And we praise God again for each of you. Amen. We started again on last week. Amen. From this series titled An Encounter uh, with the Lord. And we shared on last week how uh, there was a man, there was a man, there was a man named Zacchaeus who had some problems. He had a position, amen, but he got in a place wherein God, uh, the Lord Jesus rather, could see him. And I encouraged you on last week that regardless of what your problems is, regardless of your position, regardless of the people, that you've got to make sure uh, that you stay in a place wherein you can see the Lord and the Lord can see you. Today now, we're going to go to another, another situation here found in the book of Luke. And I want to share with you just for a few moments about this encounter uh, with the Lord. I looked up the word, the word encounter, and I think this is important uh, that we use this as a plateau or a place to start. An encounter is an unexpected experience that a person is faced with. And if we really be honest, when we look at our own lives and think about some of the things we've gone through, everything that has happened in our lives is not something that we expected. Come on, y'all talk to me this morning. There will be some experiences in your life that will come, that will come and will catch you, Deacon Gray, off guard. And then there are others, there are others uh, that while we might prepare for and expect them to come, although you're expecting it, it does not always happen how you think it should happen. You know, you know, you know, I know, I know my grandmother in particular was sick, uh, my, my uh, paternal grandmother, paternal grandmother, and she was sick and, and it, looked, it looked pretty desperate, it looked dire, and she lost so much weight in hospitals that came in. And although, although most of us and most folk realized that death was imminent, yes. even still when it happened, it still caught us by surprise. Yes. You do understand, brothers and sisters, that's how the Lord going to come, don't you? Yes. The Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. Yes. No man knows the day or the hour when the Lord will come. Yes. But brothers and sisters, that's why the old saints will say it behooves us yes. to be ready when it comes. Yes. I wonder... Today, if there's anybody who can testify, I know I better be ready yeah. when it comes. Yeah. So we find ourselves, though, we find ourselves in this seventh chapter of Luke, and we find ourselves empathetic, if you will, with what has been presented to us in this text. What has been presented is there is a woman who has suffered great loss repeatedly. The scripture says, the scripture says that not only now is she in the funeral procession of her son, this is her only son, but prior to that, Sister Pola, she had been on the front row earlier. You understand that the front row of the church is more than just the mourner's bench. We understand, brothers and sisters, for those of us who have experienced death, that the front row of the church yes. is not a place we want to be on a Saturday morning. Amen. Come on, y'all say amen, amen to me today. The front row of the church next to someone fanning you with a box of tissues is not somewhere you Amen. want to be. Amen. If you find yourself there, it, it lets us know that something has happened that has interrupted your normalcy. Yes. Death will soon disrobe us all of what we here yes. possess. And so this woman, this woman, this woman, She's bearing her husband. There is, there is no indication of how long the space has been. But you understand that it does not matter if it happened five years ago, That's 20 it. years ago, yes. 25 years ago. Death hurts. Yes, God. Have I got a witness here today yes. who can testify that death hurts? Amen. Amen. This woman, this woman, this woman, this woman has buried her 
husband. And it seems as if, it seems as if, and we're not clear of this, but, 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 but I, I believe we can make the gesture that now this is her son who she's had with her husband. And so now the husband is gone, Sister McCree. And now what is left from the union of the marriage, the son, now the seed that has been conceived from the husband and wife, now the son is gone too. Oh my God. What do you do? What do you do when all you held on to? What do you do when all you love and cared for? What do you do when it seems like everything you love is gone? How do you deal with the pain when all you have is memories? How, how can you go on knowing that once was will never be again? It's going to hurt somebody, but listen, listen, listen. There's a blessing even in the hurt. Come on, y'all say amen to me this morning. There's a blessing even in the pain. Because the blessing is the blesser is still available. Amen. Is there anybody who knows that regardless of what you go through, that God is still on the throne? Is there anybody who knows that God is still able to deal with what you're doing? God is still able to hold your heart. Is there anybody who knows he's a mender for the broken heart? That he's a battle axe in the time of a battle. That God is able to hold you when you can't hold yourself. Somebody today need to know that regardless of all you've lost, God always leaves more than he takes. Reverend, how can you say that? When my loved one, my loved one is gone. And so there we will park our car and we will view this encounter with the Lord. I want to show you a few things here. Number one, number one, I need you to look at this word name. N-A-I-N. Name. You need to know that in your life there will be some experiences that will take you from the place that you've been to the place that you are. Amen. Let me say that again. There will be some experiences in life that will take you from the place that you've been and will take you to the place that you are. Name, simply by definition, definition, is a place of completeness, is a place of happiness, is a place of wholeness. And the enemy, the enemy, brothers and sisters, every now and then will take you from your place of happiness. Take you from your place of completeness. Take you from your place of wholeness. And will cause things to make you leave from your place of completeness. From your place of wholeness. But is there anybody who knows that even when you leave from a good place. And it appears that you're traveling to a bad place. There's something about an encounter with the Lord. Because is there anybody who knows that God promised in his word that he'd be with us always. Even to the end of the world. So when you leave. From a good place, God is there. And when you find yourself going to a place of without, God is still there. Maybe you missed that. Let me me say it again then. Every now and then, the enemy will make you believe that when you leave from a good place, that you will never get to a good place again. The enemy wants you to believe that you've already lived your best life. Come on, y'all, but somebody been getting yes. this morning. The enemy wants you to believe that you've already had everything you're going to have. Yeah. The enemy wants you to believe that it's never going to get better again. Yeah. The enemy wants you to believe, so pull up, that the good in your life, those days are past and gone. Right. And the enemy wants you to keep on saying that here, and the evening shades appear. Yeah. The enemy wants you to believe that it's never going to get any better. The enemy says, you laugh, oh, you're going to laugh. The enemy says, now the rest of your days will be filled with tears. But is there anybody who knows that an encounter with the Lord will show you that just because I've cried some tears, that better days are ahead. Is there anybody who can testify with me? I know that better days. Better days are ahead. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, 
your head. Yes, sir. Oh, ye gates. And be lifted up. And the king of glory shall be strong and mighty. He is the king of glory. Is there anybody who knows that I don't have to walk around with my head held down? But I can hold my head up and understand that watch it, that I'll lift up my eyes to the heel from which cometh my help. And all of my help comes from the Lord. I've gone through some things, but I can still hold my head up. I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, but I can still hold my head up. Everything around me may not be like I wanted to be, but I can still hold my head up. Is there anybody who can testify today that I know enough about the Lord to know that I can hold my head up? Better days. Better days are ahead. Well, the Lord just downloaded this in my spirit. Not only are better days ahead, but better days are here. Somebody ought to start clapping your hands right now because better days are here. I don't have to wait till tomorrow, but my better days start today. I don't have to wait till next week. Come on, y'all, but to get this. But my better days start today. How do I know? Because I'm still here. How do I know? Because I'm still walking. How do I know? Because I'm still talking. The devil thought he was going to kill me. The devil thought I was my mind, but I'm still here. Number one, number one, number one. She's leaving this place, this place of completeness. Watch this. I always found it amazing. Always found it amazing that when death comes, folk that you normally <laughs> don't hear from. <laughs> so damn folk always from Adel, Georgia. Woo, Jesus. Come to Clearwater to see about you when death happens. And you always want to ask, where were you before this problem presented itself? Yeah, you're here now at the finality. But where were you during the process? Come on, y'all, go with me today. Yeah, you're looking at me now when my head is down. But where were you when I was going through the process? Where? Where were you when I was crying? Where were you when I was hurting? Where were you when I didn't have nobody else to turn to? But now you want to come and eat the chicken that the church brought to my house. But where were you at? Where were you at when I was going through? Now you want to use all the napkins. Yes, sir. Now you want to use all the paper towels. Yeah, now you use all of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Y'all want to tell the truth. Where were you when I was going through? Everything. Yes. My neighbor brought all them waters. Yes. You don't even let the water get cold. You drinking hot water. Yes. Where were you? Yeah. The tent out on Friday night. The fish frying. You tell the fish fry. I'm hard, please. Yeah. Got me light bread. Yeah. These grits don't taste where the butter at. Yeah. Y'all see what I'm saying? There are folk who will only come and will add to your misery. Yes. And there are yes. some folk who only come to see how you're going to handle what you're going through. But I wish there was a believer in St. Matthew this morning who could testify I'm stronger than I used to be. Come here, Marvin, son. I'm better, I'm wiser, and now I can make it. I know it was the Lord who took care of me. I know it was the Lord who was holding me. The woman is leaving man. The woman is coming out of the gate. The people are with her. You ever notice as well? I'm gonna leave it alone. You ever notice as well that there's always somebody who's crying harder than you? Jesus Lord. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Mm. Old church, Ellen Creed say, guilt. Yes, sir. Will make you hurt. Yes. She's leaving out of the gate. There's an experience going on, well, well. but news flash, and I'm done. Here he is, the encounter. Yeah. Is there anybody who knows that Jesus, Jesus. will show up yes, he will. on time? Yes, every single time. Amen. Yes. Amen. I heard, I heard somebody say, he may not come when you want it. I found out he is an on-time God. Yes. Here, 
here we see the woman leaving her place. We see this woman leaving filled with grief. We see this widow now left without child. The prospect of another child seems to be slim because the husband now is also dead. And so she finds herself, brothers and sisters, completely without. She's leaving from the city. She's walking out of the city. The coffin is in front of her. The people are beside her. And she's leaving out of the gate. But watch this. Here comes Jesus. And isn't it just like the Lord to meet us in our place? Brothers and sisters of loneliness. Yeah. Isn't it just like Jesus to meet us in our place of where we call? Isn't it just like Jesus to meet us right where we needed to be? Isn't it just like Jesus to say, watch this, I know you're going through some hurt and some pain, but, yeah. but here I am and, and I come to come to deal with what you're dealing with. Is there anybody who knows that God is able to deal with what you're dealing with? That, that God is able to touch you right where the pain is. That, that God is able to pick you up from where you're at. And God is able to turn you around. Watch this, watch this. Don't push me. Hold on a minute. I feel it though. I feel it. Here is the coffin. Here is the woman. There are the people. Here is an awesome recipe for God's glory to be revealed. That's it. Take a moment and think about your own life. Here is the problem. Here is the person. Here are the people. But isn't it amazing, brothers and sisters? That God knows how to fix what you're going through. Yes. And not only does he know how to fix what you're going through, but he'll do it in such a way yes, he will. that not only will your problem know that it was God, yes. not only will you know that it was God, but those around you will be able to say it was nobody but the Lord who did it. There's some people who watched how you go through what you're going through. Yeah. There's some people who know all about your situation. Yeah. And then there are some people who think they know all about your situation. Yeah. But is there anybody who knows? You don't know what the Lord has done for me. You don't know how the Lord has kept me. You, you don't know how the Lord has been provided for me. You don't know how when I've been all by myself that it was the Lord that was strengthening my heart. That it was the Lord speaking to me, telling me, go on and go ahead. It was the Lord saying, I am your God. I am your deliverer. I am your strength. I am your provider. I am your way out. I'm the one that's drying the tears from your eyes. I'm the one that's encouraging your heart. Is there anybody who knows that we've got an ever-present help in a time of trouble? I heard the Lord say, when problems come, I'm already there. When situations come, I'm already there. So anybody who knows that the Lord is right there by your side. If you know he's there, you ought to wave your hand. If you know that God is right there by your side, tell your neighbor, I know the Lord is right there by my side. Whatever I'm going through, he's right there by my side. Whatever I experience, he's right there by my side. Whatever I'm going through, he's right there by my side. He's holding me. 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 He won't let me fall, y'all. He won't let me fall. Didn't Jesus say, if you lean on me, I won't let you fall. If you just lean on me. I'll bear your burdens. I'll bear your burdens. I'll help you go through. I'll help you keep moving forward. I'll help you lift your head up. I'll help you because I am your strength. The woman is leaving. The problem is present. The people are there. Jesus comes. Watch this. Watch this. He says, he says to the woman, don't cry. 
if I had about 20 more minutes. If I were there, I would have been puzzled by the Lord's words. And I might have, I might have been the spokesperson for the crowd. I might have had to say, sir, I don't know who you are. Maybe you don't get the St. Pete Times. Maybe you don't get the Tampa Tribune. Maybe you ain't heard the town gossiper. Do you know what this woman has experienced? Do you know that this is not her first time dealing with what she's dealing with? And I know you're trying to be kind and nice, uh -huh. but can you show a little empathy, yeah. care, and concern for the bereaved lady? Uh -huh. But then again, maybe I would have known who this is who's telling the woman, don't cry. Yeah. Maybe I would have been able to say, I've seen your work before. <laughs> I've seen yes. how you go to other desperate yes. and dire situations. Yes. I've seen how you deal with other problems and concerns. I remember when I was down at a wedding in a place called Canaan. I remember when all of the wine ran out. I remember how you spoke a word and said, get the flower pots and fill them with water. Maybe I would have said, I heard the stories of what you did for my ancestors back in Egypt land. Yeah. I remember how they got to the Red Sea and the problem was behind them yeah. and the sea was in front of them. Maybe, maybe I would have said, I've seen how you went down to Jairus' house and I've seen Jairus' daughter laying there on her bed of affliction yeah. and I've seen how you dealt with what was going on. So, so master, maybe she should not cry, but, but tell us what we should yeah. do. Tell us how we should deal with yeah. it because God, we don't know what to do. But is there anybody who can testify that I'm going to do enough to keep my eyes on the Lord? Before. You can't make me doubt it. I know too much about it. He's real, real. Guess what, y'all? Jesus is real to me. Oh, yeah. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That's why I love him so, because he's so real to me. So you're telling me, you're telling me not to cry. So if I'm not going to cry, what are you going to do? I'm going to sit down. Have you ever been in a situation where you don't know what to do? Folk giving you all kind of opinions. Folk telling you you ought to do this. Folk trying to rush you to make decisions. Folk are trying to do all they can. And some folk are doing it from a good place. And some folk are doing it from a messy place. Amen. But you get to a place where you say, God, here is the problem. Here am I. Here are the people. Now I need an encounter with you. Yes. Jesus tells the woman, don't cry. But then Jesus does something. And it's unorthodox for that time. Understand that in these times, it was, it was considered wrong to touch the coffin. Yes. You know, now when folk die, <laughs> folk try to get up in the coffin. <laughs> and me neither, sir. I ain't trying to get in it. Folk leaning in, rubbing and kissing on the shell of what was. Mama can't feel your kiss no more. Kiss your mama while she here. Amen. Mama can't hear that you're sorry now. Tell her you're sorry while she here. Mama, mama don't want to hear all that now. Mama is no longer there. 
And so it's important that we do what we should do prior to this. But Jesus goes and touches the coffin. The coffin was considered at that time to be unclean. And anything clean that touches something that is unclean now becomes unclean. But Jesus goes and touches the coffin. I want to submit to you in the end that the Lord knows where your hurt is. Yes. Notice that the Lord does not come and touch the woman. The Lord does not spend much time trying to comfort and console her. But the Lord knows that the problem that she has is in the coffin. Yeah. And I came this morning to tell somebody real clearly that an encounter with the Lord will touch you where it hurts at. Yeah. That an encounter with the Lord will touch you where you need to be touched. Yes. Is there anybody this morning who knows that the Lord knows where to touch you at? Yes. That the Lord knows how to deal with what you're dealing with. Yes. That the Lord knows how to comfort what in your life has been comforted. Yes. The Lord knows how to keep you when you can't keep yourself. Yes. Is there anybody who can testify, I tried the Lord for myself. And I found the Lord to be an on time God. I found the Lord to be just what I need him to be. Is there anybody who knows? He bred in a starving yeah. land. He water in dry places. He's my hope for today and tomorrow. Yeah. I heard the old church say, he's a bread over troubled water. When I get myself in a battle, he's a battle in a time of a battle. He's everything that I need him to be. Have you ever tried the Lord for yourself? And won't the Lord come see about you? Won't the Lord come deal with what you're dealing with? Won't the Lord give you strength to make it through what you're going through? Won't the Lord help you hold your head up? He's able. He's able. He's able. What is he able to do? He's able to come to the of your greatest hurt. Yes. Amen. And he is able to give you yes. your greatest peace. Yes. yes. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Listen to me. Yeah. Maybe you missed everything else. Jesus. Hear this part and I'm done. The Lord knows, the Lord knows. where you hurt. Amen. Amen. You ever gone to the doctor? Thank you, God. Not feeling good. My grandma says all the time, I pay my copay, sit on the doctor's table, and the doctor say, tell me what's wrong. <laughs> well, if I knew what was wrong, doctor, I would have self-medicated and stayed home. Hallelujah. But what the doctor is really saying is tell me your symptoms. Yeah. Oftentimes what we want is we want the symptoms to go away. Yes. Doc, I've had this cough for three weeks and I just want to stop coughing. But the problem is not the cough. The cough is simply a symptom of an underlying issue. Yes. Amen. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to help somebody Amen. real quick. I'm trying to help Amen. somebody. And so the Lord, the Lord, brothers and sisters, the Lord knows how not only to deal with your symptoms, yes. but I'm glad I know that the Lord knows how to deal with the problem. Yes. He knows how to get down to the root of the problem. Yes. He knows how to get all of the situation out. Yes. And I'm so glad I know that everything that concerns me concerns the Lord. Amen. Every small minute detail of your life, God already knows about it. He knew about your problem before you had a problem. Amen. He knew about your problem even before you were formed in your mother's womb. Yes. Is there anybody who knows that he is the Alpha and the Omega? Yes, he is. That means he is the beginning and the end. Yes. He knows how many footsteps you're going to take yes. in this life. Yes. He knows how many times your heart is going to beat. He knows, brothers and sisters, how many breaths you're going to take. Yes. He knows how many hair 
particles are on your head. Yeah. And if the Lord knows every minute detail about you and I, yeah. then surely he's able to deal with your problem. Yeah. Somebody today needs to know that God knows how to deal with your problem. That God knows how to deal with your situation. Yeah. While you're trying to figure it out and while you're trying to worry about it. And while you're mulling it over, over and over again, I want to let you know that you can take your problem yes. to the Lord. Yes. And when you take it to the Lord, watch this. He knows how to deal with what you're going through. Yes. He knows how to get you out of what you're going through. He knows what you need to make it through. That's why, brothers and sisters, you ought to lean not to your own understanding. That's why you ought to acknowledge him in all of your ways. Yes. And he will direct your path. Is there anybody this morning? I'm trying to leave alone. Is there anybody this morning who knows that he knows how to deal with what you're dealing with? You ought to make up in your mind. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to lift up the name of the Lord. I'm not going to fret. I'm going to lift up the name of the Lord. Why you worry? I'm going to clap my hands. Why you worry? I'm going to sing praises to God. Why you worry? Continue to keep my eyes on the Lord. Yes, it hurts, but he's still worthy to be praised. Yes, it don't feel good, but he's still worthy to be praised. Is there anybody who knows that even in the middle of what you're going through, he's still worthy to be praised? That's why you ought to get up from where you're at and you ought to open up your mouth and you ought to tell God, thank you. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. He died. Anybody know he died? 
we that are saved know God is. There's still times in our lives that we ask God to examine us. Take out those things that are in us that not, should not be in us. And you might say, what things are those? They don't, you don't have to come from a place of drinking, doing things, but sometimes it's our very thoughts. What we think about a person. What we say about a person. How we act towards one another. So I say today, let us truly examine ourselves. Let us get to that place where God is pleased with us in everything that we do. We just stand today. God, you shout us with a blessing of new mercy. God, we thank you today, God, someone in the house today that have a father that's sick. Somebody that has a mother today has not been feeling well for a long time. We ask you, God, that you touch them today, God. I ask you, God, that you bless them today, God, in a mighty way. God, if you touch them today, God, from the crown of the head, God, to the soul of the feet. God, we thank you for that child.
that you continue to bless us, God, each and every time that we enter into the house of worship. God, that when we come into this place of worship, we take our eyes off of the peace. And God, we put our eyes on you. God, we thank you, God, that you allow us, God, to lay down last night. God, we lay down all night out of all work, all and day. God, you woke us up this morning. You touched us with a wing of the Lord. God, I'm so astonished and so blessed to know, God, when I woke up this morning. We realize, God, that everything was moving right in your power. I thank you, God, that you continue. Continue to keep us alive. Continue to strengthen us when we need. You continue, God, to build us up when we have all been torn down. And God, we thank you for that today. We bless you, Father, brother, that laid his brother to rest on yesterday. We ask you, God, to strengthen him as old as you can. We pray, God that we continue to pray for one another. As we come in here Sunday to Sunday, God, we sit next to one another. We don't realize what the one that's sitting next to us is really going through. But we help today, God, with your help. We say thank you. Thank you today, God. We ask you, God, that you continue to move through this church. Move through our lives. Pray, God, that our lives have meaning. Realize what is our purpose for being here. And all of these things are going through the transitions in our lives. We pray, God, when our hands go down, Reach over and lift our brothers and our sisters' arms back up and encourage them that they can make it through these times. You know, God, if you've done it before, God, you can do it again. God, we love you today. We thank you for every child that's in the building today. We ask you, God, that you bless these children. When the decisions of man be made. The God that you prick their hearts and you prick their minds. Let them make the right decision. God, we that know how to pray, I pray that we continue to be prayerful. To lift our children up. The right now church. Not the future church, but the right now church. The right now generation. Mm -hmm. The right now next president. Mm -hmm. The right now next scientist. Yes, God. The right now next governor. Yes, God. The right now the next mayor. Yes. The right now the next minister. Yes. The right now the next deacon. Yes. Right now, the next musician. Yes, God. But right now, the next usher. Yes, God. But right now, the next baby. Yes. But right now, the new attitude. Yes, God. But right now, the new spirit. Yes, God. But right now, the new forgiveness. The new right now to let go. Do right now. Oh God, we thank you today. We thank you today, God. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, God. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you, God. Come on, tell him thank you. Thank you. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. Yes, God. God, 
Lord, we lift you up. Yes, God. And we magnify your name. Yes, God. God, we thank you for the absent part of your church. Yes, God. Strengthen them, God. Bless those who are incarcerated. Yes, God. Ones might be incarcerated in their very minds. We ask you to free them today, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for those, God, that are in the hospital, being admitted, and those that are being released. Let us know, God, when things happen in our lives. That, God, that on the flip side of it, you get the glory. But I pray today that we stay encouraged and we encourage one another that we can make it with the help of the Lord. Where there's love in the room, where there's love in the church, where there's love in the home, there's no room for hate. Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We give you glory. And we give you honor. It is so in Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Will you take your seat. Look to your right at your neighbor. And tell them we can make it. We can make it. Look to the other side of your other neighbor. Tell them to hold on. Hold on. Look over again. Tell God. God. He's got everything. He's got everything. In control. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. Look to the other name. Yes, God. Tell him God. God. Got everything. Got everything. Under control. Under control. Hold on. Hold on. To God. To God. Unchanging. Unchanging.